This is Steve with Rocky Mountain ATV MC, and today I'm going to show you how to rebuild the bottom end on this 2015 KTM 300 XCW. Two strokes are a blast to ride, but just like any internal combustion motor, they're going to need to be rebuilt from time to time, whether it's a mechanical failure or it's a preventive measure that will aid in costly repairs in the future. KTM recommends to inspect or replace your crankshaft or transmission at 40 hours of competition use or at 80 hours of normal use. This bike has 40 hours on it, so we are electing to go ahead and inspect both of them and replace the parts necessary before the riding season starts. If you need more information about disassembling or assembling the top end, check out our How to Rebuild Your Top End on a KTM 300 XCW. Now to do this job, you're gonna need a basic set of hand tools, torque wrenches, and a variety of specialty tools, but we'll talk about those as we do the job. You'll also need gloves, safety glasses, and rags. Now as for parts, we offer a big variety here at Rocky Mountain ATV MC. So we've chosen to use a number of different manufacturers so that we can make this rebuild more cost effective. Always refer to your OEM service manual for more safety information, proper procedures, and torque specs. Now we've already drained the oil and coolant before we disassemble the top end. If you haven't done that, now would be the time to go do that. If you haven't removed your carburetor, go ahead and do so. We already re had removed it in our last video. So we need to get the engine out of the chassis so that we can continue our disassembling process. So let's get going. So first, let's remove the stator cover along with our clutch slave cylinder. Now make sure not to lose the dowel pins and go ahead and remove your gasket as well. Now using my tusk snap ring pliers, I'm gonna remove the snap ring, chain, and sprocket off. Anytime you disassemble your engine, it's best to keep your parts organized. This will make the reassembly process much easier. Next, let's remove the shift lever and kickstart lever. Next, let's remove the foot brake lever. Next, let's remove the bottom two engine mount bolts. Now to remove our swing arm pivot bolt, we need to remove these plastic frame guards and then we can get to the bolt and remove it. Now you don't necessarily need to pull the pivot swing arm bolt all the way out. You just need to pull it out far enough that the bolt is still in half of the swing arm, but far enough out that you can remove the engine. Now before you remove the engine from the chassis, make sure you have a cleared off spot to set the motor as they're kind of heavy. If you need another set of hands, grab your buddy to help you. Now you can see here on the pivot bolt, I pulled it out most of the way, but not all of the way. Go ahead and put that back through the swing arm so that the swing arm is still mounted to the frame. Then if you need to move the bike around, you can still do that without the swing arm coming off, etc. Now that we have the engine out, something that gets overlooked often is servicing or replacing your swing arm pivot bearings or your linkage bearings. It's a good idea to do it now because you have access to it. We offer a bunch of kits to do that here, and we have a few videos that you can check out as well on how to do that. Now that we have our bottom end on our bench, there's something I want to point out. While you're disassembling or assembling these things, they can roll around easy. So a good idea is to grab a couple of two by fours that you can prop the engine on as you disassemble it or assemble it so that it won't roll around. Keep it a little more stable for you as you do your work. So let's get started and take off this water pump cover. Real quick, I want to point something out about dowel pins. If they're stuck in there, just leave them in there and reuse them the way they are. If they come out with your hand, great. Just don't lose them uh, and, and use them for reassembly. Now let's remove the clutch cover and gasket in a crisscross pattern just to be safe. Next, let's remove the clutch retainer, spring washers, pressure cap, fiber, and steel plates. You might need to hold the clutch basket while loosening these. Now let's remove the clutch push rod. Next, let's remove the right side engine cover and loosen the bolts in a crisscross pattern. Now that we have the cover off, let's take our Motion Pro gear jammer and stick it between the clutch basket and the primary gear on the crankshaft so that it locks the gear and we can remove the nut that holds the primary gear on. Now this nut is a reverse thread. With our gear jammer still installed, flip the motor around and let's loosen the flywheel nut. Now let's go back to the other side of the motor. Now let's take a chisel and a hammer and we'll tap the lock washer flange out of the way so that we can remove the clutch nut. 
Let's install our Tusk clutch holding tool. And remove the inner and outer basket along with the needle be bearings and collar. Next, let's remove the primary gear off the crankshaft along with the keyway. Next, let's remove the kickstart spindle and idler gear. Now don't forget this washer. Now let's remove the shift shaft and the shift shaft mechanism. Now let's go back to the flywheel side and remove the flywheel using our Tusk flywheel puller. Now that we have the flywheel off, let's remove the keyway, just lightly tap it out. Now let's remove the reed cage assembly. Now let's remove the countershaft collar and o-ring. Now we're ready to split the cases. Take your engine and stick it up on a couple of blocks so that it's level. We will go ahead and remove all the crankcase bolts and then install our Tusk crankcase splitting tool. It's always good to flip the engine over and double check if there's any center case bolts on the other side as well. Sometimes they hide from you a little bit, but just make sure that you get them all. Now when installing our Tusk crankcase splitting tool, I like to use the flywheel nut and screw that onto the end of the crankshaft and then I will press against it instead of the crankshaft. You don't want to damage the end of the crankshaft, especially if you end up reusing it. Now when attaching the tool to the case, you want to space them out evenly so that as it pulls, it pulls evenly around the whole case. Now after we've threaded these in, just screw down the nut till it just touches the case. It doesn't need to be tight at all, just finger tight. This just stabilizes it as it's pulling. We also want to make sure that it's centered on the crankshaft so that it pushes evenly. Now we'll take our 17 millimeter ratchet and we'll put a little tension on the tool and then we will double check everything and then we'll start to pull it apart. Now that you can feel that it's loose, go ahead and remove the tool and pull the case off. Now once you have the case off, sometimes washers will stick inside, so just make sure you grab those and put them right back where they go. Next, let's remove the gasket. Now let's remove the shift rails and springs along with the shift forks and shift drum. Now you may need to hold the motor so the main shaft and counter shaft are horizontal and pull them out together. And same thing goes with the other side of the transmission. Make sure that you get all the washers out and put them where they go. Now to press the crank out of the other case half, go ahead and install these with the nut holding these flanges against the case. And they just need to be finger tight. And then you can screw this in and it will slowly push the crankshaft out the rest of the way. And next, remove the collar on the crankshaft wet side seal. And now let's remove all the engine oil seals. Now that we have everything disassembled, we're ready to clean all of our parts. Please check out our bottom end rebuild part two for the reassembly process.